And so what we did was we measured HIF levels in wild type or knockout MEFs, and we found that indeed during zero, six hours, 12 hours, or 24 hours of 1% oxygen, you saw, we saw that there was increased HIF-1-alpha stabilization. This is reflective um, also of HIF-1-alpha activity because a number of HIF target genes are also upregulated in CERT3 knockout cells under normoxia or hypoxia. Moreover, in CERT3 overexpressing cells, and here shown are 293 T cells, HIF over, CERT3 overexpression destabilizes HIF and downregulates expression of HIF target genes. Now, initially, when we got the results that CERT3 loss upregulates glycolytic metabolism, we also tested whether or not this upregulation of glycolytic metabolism was merely compensation for defects in mitochondrial function. Um, first of all, CERT3 loss causes very subtle defects in respiration and mitochondrial function. Um, and it doesn't depend on mitochondrial respiration or fat oxidation defects. But when you knock down HIF-1-alpha, now you see that there is no difference in GLUT1 expression or lactic acid secretion with CERT3 loss. So HIF is absolutely essential for metabolic reprogramming by CERT3. So how is it stab stabilized in CERT3 knockout cells? Um, this is something that really took us a long time to work out, and we looked at, we were very interested in this pathway and how um, PHT function work was regulated. And so first to probe whether or not PHT was involved, we looked at HIF-1-alpha hydroxylation levels by using uh, the presence or off absence of MG132, which is an um, inhibitor of the proteasome, or DMOG to inhibit PHD function. And basically, you could see that in CERT3 knockout cells, you could, um, there was a dramatic decrease in the level of HIF hydroxylation, suggesting that the regulation was upstream. And so CERT3 is known to regulate ROS, and this has shown in the last just year or two by multiple studies. So first, CERT3 can regulate SOD directly by deacetylation of multiple lysine residues. CERT3 also regulates um, complex one, complex three activity, and so thereby can affect the efficiency of electron transport and ROS leakage from those complexes. So we tested the model that CERT3 loss regulated ROS um, which would then regulate PHD activity. And indeed, hypoxia induces ROS levels, and we saw that in normal cells. And with CERT3 loss, we saw a greater induction of ROS level. To test the hypothesis that ROS was indeed responsible for the stability of HIF in CERT3 knockout cells, we rescued that by the addition of um, N-acetylcysteine antioxidant. And we found that indeed, NAC addition normalized um, glycolytic gene expression in knockout cells, as well as normalized the growth rate in knockout cells. And so in summary, we found that CERT3 can regulate HIF-1-alpha stability in, in activity, thereby mediating um, a glycolytic switch. So when you have CERT3, you repress HIF-1-alpha and you uh, promote mitochondrial me metabolism through gene expression, um, diverting, rapidly shutting down glycolytic pathways. Um, and when you lose CERT3, you shut down mitochondrial metabolism and you promote glycolytic gene expression. This is actually an additional layer on how CERT3 works because CERT3 primarily is localized in mitochondria and primarily activates mitochondrial oxidation um, by its deacetylase activity. So this is a really interesting kind of dual level, additional level of how CERT3 regulates cellular metabolism. First, by its deacetylase activity directly on mitochondrial substrates in, um, in metabolic pathways. Second, by regulating HIF-1-alpha activity and stability um, to drive changes in glycolytic gene expression. 
So the big question we wanted to ask next is, does this ha pathway, does CERT3, have anything to do with tumor cell metabolism? And so previously it was shown by um, David Geis's lab that CERT3 knockout um, cells grow larger tumors in xenografts of tumor formation. And we um, repeated this result, and we further analyzed these tumors for, uh, for differences in glycolytic gene expression to see if indeed CERT3 uh, knockout tumors had an altered metabolism. And we did see that there was increased glycolytic gene expression, and you can see increased GLUT1 IHC staining here. Moreover, when we use the TumorScape um, database to analyze CERT3 copy number across human tumors, we saw something really striking, which was that a large number of human tumors, about 20% in all, had a CERT3 deletion. Um, strikingly, breast tumors and ovarian tumors had a 40% deletion of one copy of CERT3, including a focal deletion. Um, so this is a CERT3 copy number CERT 4 and 5 as controls, and P53. And the blue shows the level of de deletion across different tumor types. By IHC analysis in a blind study by Julie Terura Feldstein at Sloan Kettering, she saw an even striking difference in the CERT 3 expression between normal and tumor breast cancer cells, in that about 85% of human breast cancers showed reduced CERT 3 expression. Moreover, um, we still are trying to understand and probe how important the relationship between CERT3 and HIF1-alpha is in human cancer, um, and, and that's an area we're starting to investigate now. But in these human breast tumors, what we do know is that there is a strong inverse, inverse correlation between CERT3 and glycolytic gene expression. So for instance, shown here, the higher the CERT3 expression in the human tumor, the lower the GLUT1 expression, and the reverse is true. So next we wanted to know, is CERT3 loss of function relevant to human cancers? What's the effect of CERT3 overexpression on the metabolism of human cancer? I showed detailed mechanistic studies of how CERT3 regulates HIF1-alpha in uh, 293T cells or in knockout MEFs, but what about tumor cells? And so what we did was we took a panel of breast cancer cells, shown here are CAMA1 cells or T47D cells, and we overexpressed CERT3. These are cells with low copy number of CERT3. And when you overexpress CERT3, you can see under normoxia, or shown here during hypoxia, CERT3 decreases uh, glycolytic gene expression or gene expression of uh, transcripts involved in glucose metabolism in both cases. Moreover, CERT3 overexpression also uh, results in lower levels of HIF1-alpha during hypoxia. As you would expect from changes in glycolytic gene expression, CERT3 loss CERT3 overexpression in a panel of breast cancer cells also represses glucose uptake and lactic acid secretion from the cells, suggesting that, again, in this case, um, as well as in the MEFs and other cell lines we've looked at, CERT3 overexpression represses glycolytic metabolism. So does CERT3 affect the growth of breast cancer cells? Um, not in every cell we've looked at, but in CAMA1 cells, CERT3 overexpression represses the growth of CAMA1 cells in a glucose-dependent manner. And interestingly, consistently, um, in studies we do in CAMA1 cells in the absence of glucose, we see that CERT3 overexpressing cells actually grow a little bit faster. And so we've identified a novel regulation of how CERT3 controls metabolism outside of its direct role as a mitochondrial deacetylase. So CERT3 regulates ROS levels, and that ROS acts as a signal to uh, regulate HIF1-alpha stability, thereby um, helping a cell decide whether or not to actively boost mitochondrial metabolism through re repression of HIF and activation of CERT3 deacetylation or boost glycolytic metabolism. Um, we also want to know, are there other more direct molecular targets of CERT3 that regulate HIF? 
How much do these metabolic um, reprogramming networks contribute to tumorigenesis? I showed earlier that David Geis's lab showed that this increased ROS in CERT3 knockout cells contributes to genomic instability. So what's the interplay between genomic instability and um, metabolic contributions to tumorigenesis? And does CERT3 activity or level also correlate with prognosis tumor grade or therapeutic outcome in patients. And interestingly, a really elegant study um, performed by Eric Bell in Lenny Grante's lab also showed that CERT3 regulates HIF-1-alpha stability. And so um, just in the last couple minutes of the talk, I want to switch gears and talk about a different sirtuin. So, so I focused most of my talk on how a mitochondrial sirtuin, uh, CERT3, regulates glycolytic arm of um, cellular metabolism through signaling. From um, previous work that we've done, we know that CERT4 represses glutamate de dehydrogenase. Interestingly, tumor cells um, use glutamine, and many tumor cells use more glutamine than normal cells. Um, and that is very important for biosynthesis of materials and also for energy production in tumor cells. So we examined how CERT4 re regulates glutamine utilization in a panel of different human cell lines, including tumor cells. And in most cells, we look at CERT4 overexpression, but not CERT4 over, um, overexpression of a catalytic mutant, results in a repression of glutamine utilization by cells, results in a repression of ammonia secretion from cells. Interestingly, CERT4 whole body knockout mice spontaneously develop tumors. Um, in collaboration with Zhuzha Ding, we've looked at two separate independently generated CERT4 knockout mouse um, lines and found that in each case, there was an increase in lung tumor formation um, spontaneously with age. So we see this phenotype cl most clearly at about 18 to 22 months. And so um, clearly now we're looking at whether what's the contribution of um, glutamine metabolism or uh, genomic instability to these phenotypes as well. Unlike CERT3, I just want to point out, CERT4 seems to have a very modest effect on glycolytic metabolism, so this is probably independent of the canonical Warburg effect. So in summary, we've um, I've shown you that CERT3 regulates glycolysis in addition to mitochondrial metabolism by regulation of HIF-1-alpha stability. CERT3 regulates both tumor cell metabolism and genomic instability, um, really acting as a two-pronged or a, a two-hit um, regulator. CERT4 may also have a role as a tumor suppressor, um, and there are I think by looking at this pathway of proteins, we can uncover novel roles for mitochondrial, for regulators of mitochondrial metabolism and how that interacts with genomic fidelity. So um, the HIF-1-alpha CERT3 work was really spearheaded by Lydia Finley. Um, Jay Wan Lee, a medical student in the lab, contributed to this work greatly. Um, Sing Min Jung is a very talented postdoc in the work who's really driven all of the CERT for tumorigenesis and glutamine addiction story. Um, we have a number of other collaborators. So um, our tumor work was greatly assisted by Pierpello Pandolfi, metabolomics work and bioinformatics work by Clary Cleish and Jang Wang Zen. Um, we used a CERT, CERT2 and knockout mice generated by Fred Alt's lab. We're collaborating with Xu Sha Deng and Alec Kimmelman to examine the role of CERT4 in metabolism. Thank you. <laughs>